Hi, welcome back to my project box. Today I would like to have a look at this uh, failed LED um, tube. It's one of those uh, fluorescent replacement LED tubes. Um, this one has failed out of a kitchen light. Um, it's not a particularly good one. Um, it's made out of a very fragile plastic tube. Um, but it might be repairable. I've replaced it with a better quality one. But um, I think uh, normally I would try and pull this end cap off and the driver would be behind here. Um, but it's so fragile, it started to uh, crack, so it's all, the plastic's all cracked here, it's, it's so brittle. So if I try, try to pull that off, most likely all of this would just break. So what I might just do is either hacksaw this off carefully and see if I can get to the driver that way and just, just glue it back together if I can repair it. So let's have a look at that. This thing is so fragile, it just wants to break just by looking at it. So that's the driver. Let's see if we can coax it to come out. There you go. So if you see inside this, it's almost like a regular LED strip tape inside. And then you have this current limiting LED driver. I think uh, if the driver is faulty, I might just try and make a simple capacitive dropper. And I, I think that should work. So we're getting an input voltage by the looks of it. Yeah, we're getting an input voltage, 240 volts. And if we check on our DC setting, We should see a voltage on this capacitor here and I don't get any reading there and that's the directly connected to the output so this is the capacitor is sitting across the output here. I would expect to see something like 60 volts or more. So something is wrong with this LED driver. Turn the power off. If we check on this side, um, there is a fusible resistor. So we can check if it's blown. On the continuity setting. Seems good. Yeah, so we have a simple buck converter here. Um, it's not an isolation transformer. Um, I think it's just an inductor that gets pulsed by this little chip and it just pulses this inductor and reduces the voltage and limits the current to the LEDs. I thought I'd check with the diode test to see if the diode on the output is okay. So in one direction we get nothing and if we sort the polarity we get a about a half a volt, which is good for a silicon diode. So it's not a Schottky diode, it's a normal silicon diode on the output. And that diode is okay. Uh, I've checked for voltage across this capacitor, which is just after the bridge rectifier, and I get a DC voltage there, so I assume the bridge rectifier is okay. So the only thing I can think that's failed is uh, the main driver chip over there. So it's not worth repairing. So let's try our little um, capacitive dropper circuit, see if that gets it going. So I think this is just about as simple as you can make a LED driver circuit. Um, it's a simple capacitive dropper, as basic as you can get. You can make it more complicated, but this is as simple as you can make it. And I've salvaged some of the components out of the original driver, like the main filter capacitor and the fusible resistor and the uh, one microfarad uh, capacitive dropper on the input is also salvaged from something. Um, it's worth mentioning that you absolutely have to have your load of the series connected LED string needs to be connected because it clamps the voltage down. If you accidentally leave that disconnected and the circuit is powered, the capacitor 
could rapidly charge up on the output and it would go above its rating. Because I wanted to keep this circuit as compact and as simple as possible, I've eliminated the discharge resistor for the main dropper capacitor and I've also not included a series resistor that connects to the LEDs to protect it from high frequency noise or anything that makes it through the dropper cap or when it charges up initially. The LEDs I think are less susceptible to damage because there's multiple series string connected in parallel that can shunt out any nasty current spikes. So it's less tolerant to the sensitive LEDs getting damaged. So my little DIY driver circuit is going to be very simple. We're going to have uh, the um, inrush um, fusible resistor as a protective fuse and inrush limiter coming that came off this board originally. And um, a capacitive dropper. Uh, it's going to be a one microfarad capacitor to, to limit the current and drop the voltage. And then I took uh, the original smoothing capacitor off of the original driver and will incorporate that out as well. And what I'll do is I'll make my own uh, bridge rectifier out of discrete diodes. It's just what I have at hand at the moment. So we'll start by taking these diodes and we take two of them and have them both facing the same way. We put them at an angle like that and uh, we twist them together. So we have the two stripy ends going together. Then we do the same thing again, but this time we take the opposite ends. So the the, stroopy, the the two backs that don't have stripes, we put them together. And we uh, we twist them together. Doesn't have to be neat, it just has to work. And now, it's just a matter of joining those two ends together. So we have one stripe facing one back and one stripe facing one back. So we'll twist those together. There we go. Bridge rectifier complete. And now um, this will be the positive out and this will be the negative out and this will be our AC in these two terminals. So the capacitor would go, one of them would go on the AC in and we can just for fun put our fusible resistor on this side or in line with the capacitor it doesn't really matter and then the output of the um, bridge rectifier just connects to the capacitor bear in mind we need to know which one is the positive and the one with the stripe is the negative so that would be the positive so that it would go this way around like that so we just connect it all together now so I'm going to give everything a thin coat of solder so we can just tack it all together. Even little balls of solder is useful sometimes. So I've just clipped the wires back a bit. So now we can just tack everything on. So this is the negative I'm doing first. And uh, then the positive wire. Now I think one of the AC terminals can go join onto the capacitor just there, I think. Something like, yeah, something like that, I think. There we go. Providing this all fits inside our um, our tube, and now our fusible resistor, which uh, I think should go onto this lead here. Yeah, for some reason I think it should go here. So we'll crop this back a bit. We'll add our fusible resistor. On one side of the bridge rectifier, I think. So it's not going to win any awards for uh, a beauty contest, but I think it's going to work. So let's wire it up and see if it works. 
this is our negative. positive on the other side of the capacitor. Now it's a very crude driver but I'm sure it's going to work just fine. Like I said it's not going to win any beauty contests but <clears throat> as long as it goes in there and nothing shorts out I think we've got a winner. So let's connect our end cap. Fusible resistor for protection and then live and neutral does not matter in this case because the lamp is reversible. Let's see if that fires up if we apply power. Right, I've got it all wired up now and uh, hopefully this will all go inside the neatly and we can just glue this um, end cap back together and uh, let's fire it up and see if it works. So as you can see we basically have a LED uh, replacement for a fluorescent tube that works great. It's quite a crappy one, it's just got this really brittle plastic stuff. Um, but if we glue it back together we will have a working um, LED tube which hopefully runs at a slightly lower current, so it's not roasting the LED so much. Um, and uh, it should last longer than it did originally. So right, it's uh, all glued back together. It ain't pretty, but uh, it's definitely going to work, and it's going to be behind a diffuser anyway. Uh, I, I use my favorite trick of a bit of super glue, and then uh, to accelerate the super glue and bind it together, you use some uh, bicarbonate of soda. Just sprinkle it on top of the super glue, then it sets instantly. So you don't have to have uh, your fingers holding it there for ages. Obviously, my fingers are covered in super glue now, that can't be helped. So let's test it and see if it uh, works or if it goes bang. I think it'll work just fine. So we'll have our ultra safe connection of two little wires twisted over the end tips, the end pins. Let's put the power on. Basically, this is how I see it. It's uh, no flickering whatsoever for me. So that's it. Uh, this crappy, cheap, chinese LED replacement tube is now good to go. And hopefully it'll last much, much longer. So maybe if you guys have an LED tube, I know they're not expensive. Um, but, you know, less, less e-waste, less stuff to go um, into the bin. At least it gets reused and a new lease on life. So if you like these kind of videos and uh, you have any ideas for me what to make a video about in the future, let me know. Um, I'll hope to see you on the next one. It's a lot of fun to fix things. Um, I know it's not always worth doing, but it's always nice to see the end result, to see that it's working.